So the other problem for chapter 17 is going to be 69A, and it's asking for the, we're trying to find the equilibrium constant, which we know is a K value, right, with a big K, like our usual K. So it gives us a formula, carbon, di uh, carbon monoxide gas plus O2 gas going to CO2 gas. Um, remember, we need to make sure it's balanced, and so we're going to put a 2 in front of this guy. All right, so putting a two in front of this guy, and then so it should be balanced. <clears throat> and so we have um, to find the K. And remember, our formula for K is going to be we're going to use our delta G where, with negative R T natural log of K. That's the only way we can combine G and K. So with that, we need to find delta G first to solve for K. Now, delta G of reaction, remember, anything of reaction is going to be delta G of products minus delta G of reactant. Anything of reaction is products minus reactants. And now, how are we going to get delta G of products and reactants is from a table in the book. Or if it's on a test, Dr. Klausner might give you the values. But, um... In some way, you have to get them. You have to get these standard numbers. So I kind of wrote them up here. I hope you can see them. It's delta G of formation for carbon monoxide is negative 137.2. And carbon dioxide is 394.4. Now, remember, O2, I wrote a little zero in there because uh, G of formation for all elements in their elemental state at standard temperature and pressure, which we are at, um, is zero. Delta G is zero, and we don't worry about it. So, um, remember, I'm going to convert this to 298 Kelvin already, just so I don't forget. I don't get this Kelvin K and this K mixed up. Um, so now we have delta G of products is simply going to be the sum of all the product reactants. Uh, sorry, the product elements or molecules over here. So, remember, it is an extensive property, so we have to account for the two moles of negative 394.4 off the table kilojoules per mole. So our answer is 2 times that, which is 798, 788, negative 788.8 kilojoules. All right. Um, remember, that's our products. Now we'll do delta G of reactants is this guy's, right? We already know O2 doesn't have any, so we're just going to have negative 137.2 times 2. And so we have negative 274.4 kilojoules. And remember and that we don't have anything for O2. It's zero. All right. So now that we have product and reactants, remember we need to do products minus reactants. So that is simply just going to be negative 788.8 minus a negative 274.4. And so our final delta G of reaction is going to be... Uh, you add the negative of this guy, so it's just going to be negative 514.4 kilojoules. Now remember, this is not the end of the problem. We have to also go on to find K. So we need to use this as our next step, and we're going to find K by plugging this in to the negative RT natural log of K. So... We know it's negative 514.4 equals negative, and remember this R is the 8.314 R because we're using um, joules per mole Kelvin times T of 298 Kelvin times natural log of K. So now we need to go to find K. Now, we just multiply all these across, and remember, we get, you we're going to raise E to a power, and K is going to end up being a huge number. One, K is 1.48 times 10 to the 90th. I hope your calculator goes that high. Um, but that is what we have for K in this case, because it's just 
it, we expect it to be big. It's a huge, um, there's a very negative delta G, so it's going to have a big Ka. So to review, we have to find products minus reactants, and then we have to go on and find, for to get delta G on this side, to find K. He could have given you K, and then we'd have just have to plug everything in, and we'd find delta G. So two options to work in this problem. But don't forget your negative signs.